So before we start doing derivatives of logarithms, quick review of logarithms. When I say the log base 5 of 125, that means I'm asking 5 to what power is 125. So in other words, the logarithm is asking what's the exponent. That means logarithms are exponents. And this is a great way of thinking about logarithms because it makes the properties of logarithms make much more sense. Um, because you're pretty comfortable with your properties of log of exponents. For example, if I multiply two numbers with the same base, you would add the exponents together. Well, the idea still works with logarithms. So I'm saying I want the log base 2 of 5 of 4 times 16. I'm multiplying two numbers with the same base, the 4 and 16 with the base being 2. Well, I would take the exponents for each of those numbers, log base 4 of 2 of 4 and the log base 2 of 16, and add those exponents. When dividing two numbers with the same base, so if I had 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3rd, we would subtract the exponents. same thing still applies with logarithms. There, It's just saying focus only on the exponents. So I take the exponent of the numerator and subtract the exponent of the denominator. And I briefly talked about this in my video involving uh, the derivatives of exponential functions, but if I'm saying if I raise a power to another power, I would multiply the exponents. Well, the same thing happens in logarithms. So remember, if I say the log base 2 of 16 to the fourth, well, the log base 2 of 16 is an exponent that I'm raising to the, another exponent of 4, so I can multiply the two exponents. So hopefully those properties would make more sense when we think of logarithms as exponents. But then there's also the change of base. Uh, in calculus, we use this a lot because just like base e is the easiest exponential function to deal with, base e is the easiest logarithm. So natural logs are, the, are what we want. And basically, any time that we have a log that's not base e, we're going to change it to base e. So a quick review of how to do a change of base. If I have the log base 7 of 6, to change the base, I'm going to do two logarithms in the base I want. So I'm going to want natural logs. And I'm going to have a natural log on top and a natural log on bottom. What I was finding the log of originally, I'm going to do the natural log of on top. And on the bottom is going to be the natural log of the old base. And if you actually type this in your calculator, you'll see it's the exact same thing as log base 7 of 6. But since we'll usually have variables involved in this, I would take the natural log of what's inside over the natural log of the old base. But I then tend to write this as multiplication. So I'd have 1 over the natural log of 3 times the natural log of x. And the reason that's nice to do is the 1 over natural log of 3 is a constant multiple for the natural log of x. So if you know how to find the derivative of the natural log of x, the 1 over natural log of 3 is just a constant multiple of it. So then, if I want to find the derivative of the natural log of x, which is all based on, and again, I'm going to show you where it comes from, but most people just end up memorizing this derivative but it's nice to know what, where it comes from in case you forget it. So we don't know how to find the derivative of logarithms, but we do know implicit differentiation. So I'm going to rewrite this so it's not a, a logarithm anymore. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to make each side of the equation the exponent 
for e. And I can do that because I'm doing the same thing to both sides of the equation. So I'm just saying each side is the exponent for e. So on the left, I now have e to the y. And on the right, e and natural log cancel out, leaving x. Well, this is now an exponential. Implicit differentiation says, okay, x is my independent variable. So I don't need to worry about chain rule on the right-hand side. That derivative of x is just 1. But I'm going to have to worry about chain rule on the left. So I'm going to have e to the y, because the derivative of e to the y is itself, times the derivative of the exponent, which is whatever dy dx is. But now I can isolate the dy dx. And this doesn't seem very helpful to us until I realize, wait a minute, I know from up here that e to the y is the same as 1 over x. And here is the derivative of a natural log. Now please note, we're not worrying about the chain rule of what's inside a natural log, but basically mo what most people memorize is if oops, the natural log, the derivative of a natural log is 1 over whatever's inside, then do the chain rule and times the derivative of the inside. If I have a log that is not base e, we just change the base so that it is a natural log. So the natural log base 7, or I'm sorry, the log base 7 of x squared plus x, before I take the derivative, I'd say, well, this is the natural log of x squared plus x over the natural log of 7. But I'm going to write that so it's multiplication, 1 over the natural log of 7 times the natural log of x squared plus x. Now I can take the derivative. 1 over natural log of 7 is a constant multiple, so it just stays there. Times the derivative of natural log is 1 over the inside. But then I have a function inside, so I need to do chain rule times the derivative of the inside. And there is the derivative of a log that is not a natural log. 